Hello friends, welcome to AI Flocks. So 2024 seems to be just becoming the year of the 7B model becoming more and more capable and surpassing all other areas of open source in AI. And today I have another incredible 7B model to talk about. This is also coming from Maxime Lebon. Uh, this is the developer who worked on Fixtral. And I think this is a really interesting model and I like it as well because it demonstrates some common ways that more performance can be extracted from models that otherwise seem to be performing at their best. This is a bit of a caveat, and not just with one or two benchmarks, but a whole series of benchmarks. And I do want to talk about how benchmarking these models has evolved over time, and how benchmarks that were produced even a few months ago have to be updated to reflect uh, current performance of these models, and why Neural Beagle 147B is just a really cool benchmark to show what can be done with just what is currently in existence in open source. So what is Neural Beagle 7B? So basically this is a combination of a few existing data sets that were quite good on their own, but applying these two methods called merge and DPO. As Maxime says here, he says it's the best performing 7B parameter model on the open LLM leaderboard, which right now is the standard for a general level of uh, benchmarking. And he says, remarkably, it also ranks 10th best performing model overall on the open LLM leaderboard and all in just 7 billion parameters, which is still quite small when you compare it to models like, you know, what OpenAI uses for GPT 3.5 or even GPT-2. So what does it mean to use merge and DPO to profit or to make these models really, really good? So DPO is something that's gotten popular lately. And when we're talking about training ML models or building AI models, um, most of the footwork or most of the effort really goes into data wrangling and understanding what's being fed in, not necessarily the code that drives inference. So DPO stands for Direct Preference Optimization, and basically this is a novel approach for optimizing AI systems based on user preferences or predefined criteria. Um, DPO aims to improve the performance of AI algorithms by enhancing the quality of recommendations or outputs. And this isn't really the same as RLHF. Um, what's kind of interesting is a lot of DPO currently is actually um, generated synthetically. Uh, and for reasons that researchers aren't really quite sure of yet, um, sometimes using synthetic DPO can actually give you better results than using RLHF from humans. Um, a lot of people think the reason OpenAI's GPT-4 has gotten so bad at certain things is purely a result of RLHF and that just being balanced improperly. And merging, basically that's just when you have two similar models. So say you have two 7B models that are roughly similar and that is an intelligent way of taking the raw data set used to produce them and mashing them together into one that is similar enough in how it's structured that you can train on both of them to create a single model. So Maxime here says that uh, he used the Una Beagle 7B V1 just to kind of have a different starting point from where other people have been doing things uh, you know, with Fixtral or stuff from uh, Mixtral. And another called Neural Marcoro 14 using a dist labeled preference data set using a distilled label preference data set and basically all this means is that the, the data set it's been given has strong self-instruct capabilities it's mostly built around a preference data set so basically it, it gives much more context as to what you would want as a potential result and is also quite similar to something that uh, you would call a a diverse preference data set which is another way we can use RLHF to align certain portions of a model or basically to push it to get, give us more of what we want based on certain inputs. And what's cool is it actually performed really, really well. So you can see here Neural Beagle is at the top of this benchmark right now. Uh, it's not wildly better, but it's still, if we look at the average across ARC, Helleswag, MMLU, Truthful QA, uh, Winograde, and GSM8K, it's performing basically the best out of all these. And Maxime then said, well, you know, th that might be a bit too much of the same preference data set, which is why it's performing that way. But what's cool is when you compare it to the non-DPO merge, just basically straight up Beagle 14, the performance really doesn't improve that much. But it does improve on the, uh, the NOS research suite. And this might be just because of chance, or this might be because uh, one relied on one of these distill label uh, data sets that were initially used for the, the Orca DPO pairs. However, the performance was still great and it's clearly still at the top of all these seven billion parameter models. 
Now, one thing that I think is really cool that I wish these benchmark tools would be able to visualize better is basically a chart like this that can show the progress that's been made on no suite in just a few months or the progress that's been made in models in just a few short months. So the question here is, are merges overrated? And right now it looks like the answer to that is probably. But what's interesting is they are at least now appearing to be better than non-merged models, which means that if you mash their, uh, their initial training sets together, for reasons that we're maybe not quite sure of yet or that haven't been fully tested, they are technically getting better. And what's cool here is you can look at Mistral 7B, which was one of the first really big groundbreaking 7B models that was really quite capable. And we kind of go up through here through like, you know, OpenChat 3.5, uh, Open Hermes, Mistral 7B, through um, different instruct models built on Mistral 7B, uh, like Beyonder 4x7B. Uh, and then we have Neural Mercuro 147B, which is actually what was built with this latest merge in Neural Beagle. And we have the original Beagle 147B. So what's cool is all these different approaches in open source are slowly adding incremental improvements. And this is why open source is so cool in AI, because these are all different implementations trying a mishmash of different things. And everybody else looking at these can learn from this and use it to apply better performance. And as a result, we now have you know, 7B models that are 10% more performant uh, on the relative scale. And granted, this is all coming from qualitative feedback. Um, the Reddit community at Local Llama is actually quite good for running tons of benchmarks. I think what will be more interesting as opposed to distributed training for these models is really just distributed benchmarking and understanding with thousands of examples that aren't being necessarily machine generated how good these models actually are on a bunch of different hardware. And I think in, you know, in certain cases, you can see that the results are a little bit overblown because the reproducibility of a bunch of Reddit users doing stuff, you know, is rightly kind of questionable, but that doesn't mean they're bad. And right now they're just a lot of exceptionally good 7B models. And I want to get into more model testing and kind of what benchmarking really means with these models in the future, because right now there's so many and every time you know a big um, corporate tech company like Google or Meta comes out with a model, it seems like they always release their own benchmark with it, which obviously is biased. And I think we need to give NOS Research more credit, and some of these other you know companies as well, like Open LLM, who try to give uh, kind of good faith, unbiased, or at least as unbiased as possible, benchmarks for all of these models. And what's really cool is you can actually demo this right now. So unlike other models we've showcased that have been kind of right off the bat, um, you can actually use this right now. So there is the Hugging Face page for the model. There actually is a GGUF version, which is kind of cool. This also utilized Merge Kit for those of you who are curious. And let's go actually kind of try this out. And I do want to give thanks to Argilla. All, all of this tooling wouldn't be possible without their kind of initial data set and training recipe. I want to do a video about some of their stuff as well because they've been doing a lot of work with NOS Research and a few other kind of big contributors in this space, um, Technium to name a few. And uh, what's also cool is they're coming out with really cool things uh, like synthetic Haiku DPOs. And I think these are really cool examples of what you can do on the bleeding edge with open source models and uh, synthetic data. So what's cool is you can try this right now. Uh, I'm gonna try putting in a few different things and let's see what we can do. So I'm gonna first go with my Lewis and Clark example. So explain why you like Lewis better than Clark in terms of exploration. And one thing you'll notice with these instruct models is a lot of times they like explaining information more expediently through bullet points. And I think that's a curious side effect you sometimes see with these. Great, so I think this looks good. Now, one thing that I, I do want to do is try a more objective question. So something like, uh, was Martin Luther a good person? The average person during Reformation. Answer, and we'll give it some bounding, we'll give it some guardrails here. We'll say answer in two to th three sentences. I've actually liked doing history questions because I think it's, when you ask like a, an opinion or you ask a critique or a more complex question that's nuanced, 
you get really interesting answers, and sometimes these models do struggle with this. And you can also eke out where bias is as well. And what's cool is models that are pretty well aligned will actually not have massive um, bias on either side. You, a lot of times it'll be kind of, it'll trend with what they think is nice, uh, and they'll try to give you kind of a look at both sides. And what's cool is that's what this model is actually doing right now. And it's also kind of ironic asking a synthetic AI um, a objective question about uh, any kind of religious faith. I'm not religious. I just I think it's a curious thing to ask about. So that's pretty good. Uh, the, perform the, the performance isn't great, but this is running on like a, a free um, spaces, on a free hugging face space. So not too worried there. Now for a more technical one, uh, let me see here. How should I best represent a time series I want to schedule in the future for a basic temperature control system in my greenhouse. I'd like to use Python. Let's try this. Now, it'll be curious if it tries to give us code or it, if it picks kind of the easiest path here and just gives us a high-level architecture. I said Python, but the idea here is that it just understands I want to use that set of libraries or that kind of ecosystem. All right, so this is pretty suitable. Let me ask one more question that's more of a straight-up coding question, and we'll see how this goes. Now, for my last question, I want to try actually changing the text box. And right now, I'm going to go here and say coding assistant. And let's use this one here. So we're asking for a pretty basic function, but I've modified the system prompt to say you are a coding assistant, not just a general assistant. So we'll see what this model produces. So it took a little while, but we eventually got this really nice function. It's not quite as well documented as some of the code we get from Mixtrol or some of the original Mistral models, but it's still totally there and it functions on the first try, which is pretty cool. So if you guys like this kind of content, please let us know. We're going to try to keep doing more slightly more in-depth content with when it comes to putting models together and actually sort of the tools and, and actually the tooling and architecture that goes into making some of these new um, fine tunes or these new kind of novel 7B models, small enough that you could actually do it with, you know, a few 4090s or 3090s on your own. So if you like our content, please like and subscribe and share. That helps us out a ton, and we'll see you in the next video.